I'm just gonna have to be shiny today. If you are new here, my name is Marie and I like to make things. And I also like to turn around and show you how I made those things. Welcome to my channel. As promised, I got a new shirt and a new hat. I lied, I didn't promise you guys that. But what I did promise you is I promised to do a video to learn how to read a graph and crochet by using a graph. Now, I'm gonna try to make this video as short as possible, short and sweet and straight to the point because I don't know how to do that, but we're gonna try. Of course, with the last video, video will lo be located at the top of our screen here. You can go to that video. You'll learn how to make your own graph using Knit Pro, Stitch Fiddle, or even an iOS app grid maker. And you can use your iPad to actually make graphs that you can crochet with. And if you wanna learn how to do that first before we get started, then go to that video. And for those who have already seen the video, let's get into it. I did wanna clear up something um, with my last video, is that I showed you how to use Knit Pro, I showed you how to do Stitch Fiddle, and how to use an app called Grid Maker I didn't tell you guys because I really didn't want to play sides in that in that particular video, but I'll do it here. This video seems like the platform for what I'm about to say next. I think out of all of those things, I did like um, I did like each one of them. Each one of them had its points, but I must say, Stitch Fiddle was the best out of all three. The reason being is because of the fact that you can fill in each square. Um, with whatever color you want to and vice versa. Um, and it seems like it was easier to, to make the grid. Um, it was easier to, to put in the exact numbers of how many squares you want. The grid is black. I think they give you more choices, but I'm not gonna dive too deeply in there. I'm not gonna dive too deep because we needed to keep it simple. I just needed a simple graph with a picture that I already drew up. Now, that's what I like about it. You know, you can choose how many colors, you can choose how many colors you don't want. You know, you can take them out, you can replace them. So I really do think like out of all three, Stitch Fiddle is the best, but you know, I think I, I never dealt with Stitch Fiddle as a free program to use. I paid $5, so I don't really know what the, um, parameters are with that five dollars I just know that I needed an XL <laughs> an XL spreadsheet um that's all I remember about that I needed to pay the five dollars to do it and I was like five dollars same thing five dollars same thing I said in the video five dollars really isn't all that bad I am willing to pay five dollars for a couple months if need be it's no big deal for the last video I had did a snake plant. I drew it up because I thought that that looked better on my couch. I decided with that snake plant, I used that drawing to demonstrate how to use Grid Maker. For this video, I'm not using Grid Maker's grid in order to create this video. I decided to go back to Stitch Fiddle and I did the same thing on Stitch Fiddle and then I changed it all around. So I had exported it out of Stitch Fiddle and I had put it onto my iPad and I put it into my iBooks. So I would suggest if you ever get any patterns, even if you're like, okay, I can't make my own patterns. I just clicked on this video so that I can learn how to read a graph. So let's say you purchase a graph from someone on Etsy or whatever Ravelry. Let's say you just have a grid and you're like, how do I use this grid? How do I read this grid? I always suggest that you take your digital patterns, any of your digital patterns, I suggest you put it in iBooks or have it digitally available to you. The reason why I say that is because in iBooks, you can actually edit that pattern and put whatever type of little notes that you want on it. So for my pattern, I exported it out of Stitch Fiddle and then from there, I put it into my iBooks. Easy enough. So when I open it up in my iBooks, um, you know, the grid is what the grid is, okay? Now, here's my, herein lies my problem, the reason why grids are very hard to read. So this right here is the 
grid pattern that I got from Stitch Fiddle. So of course, like I mentioned in the last video, I did it 70 squares by 70 squares. So 70 going across, 70 going up and down, okay? So I like also to have white space um, at the top and white space on the bottom, okay? So that's another thing. It doesn't really matter what the space is around here, just as long as it's not a wonky looking design. So when you start going row by row, that's when it starts to get a little little confusing for pe some people, even for myself. It's really hard to like keep the rows separated. First things first, whenever we start with our crochet graphs, we just know that every single square represents a single crochet. I don't suggest you using half double crochets when you're doing a graph because it does mess it up a little bit. It makes it a little bit wonky and it makes the stitches very, very thick. So you want to keep it at that short little tiny stitch of a single crochet stitch, okay? Now, when I start my patterns, I always go, this sounds really, really crazy, but I take about a half an hour and I go and I look at this pattern and I look at the different rows and I look to see how much white I need for this row, how much, you know, pot color do I need for this row? How much would it be, you know, so I, what I do is I actually go into this pattern and I zoom in, okay? So we're gonna zoom in here. And what I do is you see this little, this little pen icon right here. So I click that, that lets me know I am in writing mode and you know you're in writing mode in iBooks when you see this little symbol right here, this little toolbar. Now, what I like to do is this is the part where I need the pen and so I take the pen and in any areas I go, any areas that have uh, color, I always go with the white, okay? The next thing I do is, so now I go and I count across how many I would need. So I count out how many of this tan color that I need. Okay, so now I know that this is 21 boxes here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write out 21 boxes. So I'm just gonna write 21 there. So that lets me know this whole square here, this is all going to be 21 boxes across. So I know that this is an easy pattern, but there's some patterns that I got that were like, what? And it took me a half an hour to do it. So I would like to do the same thing for um, this tan right here. Just where this color is, I'm going to count out. And I think it's like, if it's not 20, 21, it might still be 21, 22. So it'll be 22 boxes for this tan color. So I'm writing in 22. So that lets me know all the way across here is 22. So I like to do that going up in this pattern so that it makes it easier. Whereas I can look at the pattern really quick, can look to see how many colors I need for that row. So I'm going to write in here how many colors I need for the plant itself. The pot is already done because it's one big square. Each row is going to be the same thing. That's not, that's not hard, okay? So I'm gonna work on the plant itself really quick and I'm gonna write in all the, the numbers real quick. And then I also don't like to do it for each row because sometimes you can just eye it up. Like I know there's three here, there's one, there's two, there's two here, there's one here. You know, it's that's easy. But sometimes when it gets past, like when it starts to get to about five, then it's hard for me to like visualize and be like, okay, this is how many boxes are there. So then I start writing it in. After I go over five, I'm like, I can't, I can't gauge it really well. So I like to just make it easier on myself as I go and just write in whatever boxes that don't stick out to me very well. So I'm just gonna put them in here. Yeah, 
So I'm not going to do it for the green colors because, you know, you can eye that up and gauge it on your on your own. I, I think at least I can. Um, if you want to, you can just put one box or two. That's up to you. So um, also now this is the harder part that I found that I don't like to do at all. So I know that I got to go five rows. As you can see here, I have to go five rows. That's just the plain main color. So I'm going to say, I'm going to put a, oh, not in white though. So I'm going to use like a weird green color. I know I spent way too much time on picking this green color, but whatever. Because I know this right here represents how many rows I have to go up before I start changing colors and then it starts to get really spicy on us, okay? So I know I had to go five rows, all right? So now when we start getting over to our side here, we're at the beginning of our graph here because of the way the numbers are going. So I know that 25, 23 right here, that would mean that there's 23 white single crochets that will be going across here, okay? So we're going to, I'm going to put a big, oops, I'm going to put a big 23 because that lets me know that wherever in this area of the grid, this is all going to be 21, 23 squares going across. Each square will represent a single crochet. So it's the same thing for the other side. I'm not going to assume that I did this centered. I can never assume that I do things centered. No. So I'm going to count these up real quick. I did not. I have 24 squares instead of 23 squares. Close. I'm going to write a big 24 here so that I know in between this line and in between this line, if I'm starting right here, it's going to be 24 stitches. So now I'm going to work on the sides starting from this square, this first square, and I'm just going to put little notes going down the sides, okay? This is always the tedious part of doing a crochet graph is to make sure you have the right amount of stitches. Um, and so another way that I check to see if I have the right amount of stitches is I take my ruler and I lay it down. It's easier when you're on the beginning of your pattern, when you're on the first part of your pattern, you know that this line right here, this square right here is 20, switch 20 stitches. So when you go down and you're writing it in, you see this is wrote, wrote in correctly, 20 stitches. And then I also go and I do it this way where I know that's correct. Then that means that right here would be 20 stitches because they're evenly placed. So you know that these stitches are the same as these stitches right here. So I don't know if that makes sense but it's not math, that helps. Um, so this has always been, for me, the most tedious part, but I do this because later on, when you're sitting there and you're in the middle of your pattern, you having to stop every 10 minutes to be like, okay, so how many squares do I need to do? Okay, how many single crochets? Okay, one, two, three, four. And instead of you doing that, do it ahead of time have it already there, basically just have your pattern just written out like this. And you can, all you have to do is just look at it, say, okay, 21, 21 white single crochets. You know, you could just keep it moving instead of you sitting there trying to count as you go. And then what row was I on? It gets really confusing. Trust me. So I'm going to finish doing these rows really quick. And then, and then we're going to discuss what the first couple rows is going to look like. We're going to be looking, we're going to use these numbers. We're going to use these numbers up top to make sure that we put the right amount of stitches. See right here, I put 32. Let's check to see if that's 32 stitches in. Yep, it sure is. Same thing with this one. This one's 33 up top. 
If you look at it, it's 33, okay? Okay, so we're done. And this is overall what it looks like. It looks like a big jumbled mess of what the heck. But later on, this is going to come in handy when you're trying to crochet and just keep it moving at a nice pace. It might be a snail's pace, but it will be a good pace where you don't have to stop every single time because the more you stop doing this pattern, the more confusion you will have. Trust me. So this is what it looks like. I have my little notes so that I know I'm not going to fill this in. Why do you think I'm not filling that in? Because I know that this square is 70 stitches by 70 stitches. So I know that going across here is going to be 70 stitches. And besides, all you have to do is just fill that in with white. You're not changing any colors or doing anything special. So I don't need to put any notes there. So I'm going to write a big 21 here. So I know in this box, this whole box is 21 stitches going across okay so this is what it looks like so i got my little notes in the middle i know that these are stitch six stitches of green you know some of them are not filled in because i can tell that's four four boxes four stitches same thing three stitches you know that's easy i can eye that up just looking at the pattern really quick i could say okay i need three of a certain color you could see that so i didn't put any notes there if you want to put notes there go on ahead by all means all right so we already know that for our first couple of rows we are needing to do five rows of white so i'm going to leave this up here here so if you want to, this is up to you. This is what I do for every single row, like I explained earlier. I take my little highlighter. I don't really highlight the whole row. I just highlight a little piece of the row and I'm just gonna highlight this. I'm not letting myself know, just letting myself know what row I'm on. So I know I'm on this chain, beginning chain here. So I'm just gonna highlight that and I know that I'm on the beginning chain. So just think this is a actual crochet project so you know that at the beginning of each row you're going to chain one if you're going to be doing a single crochet for those rows you're just going to chain one every single time when you when you are going to another row you chain one you turn and you just keep going using the graph okay so what we're going to do is first we're going to start with we know that the square is 70 stitches so if it's 70 stitches that means we need to chain 70 and then once we chain 70 we add one more chain on top of that because that lets me know that lets us know that we're going to the next row if i'm trying to do 70 single crochets i need to chain 71 chains okay i'm not trying to teach you how to crochet but i thought i should um Put that little tidbit in about the chaining so i'm going to chain 71 okay so i chained 71 and so what we're going to do once you did 71 all you're doing you're just going into the very next chain so that's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to do a single crochet. So then you're just single crocheting across as normal. Okay. You're just going to single crochet across. And so what I'm going to do, because I'm not here to teach you how to crochet. This is not what this video is about. This video is about charts and how to read your chart, um, to know what each square represents. Not only that, to know that each square represents a single crochet. And when you're going in between rows, all you have to do, you get to the end of the row, you chain one, and then you turn. Really, Nat? I'm about to fight a Nat. Do you live here? Do you pay rent here? That is the only direction I'm going to give you when it comes to crocheting because I can't tell you how to crochet. That would make this video so long. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do five rows because according to this pattern, it's telling me five rows is needed for the beginning of this pattern. And then once I get to that point, I am going to show you how to 
read this so chart. I and have I'm here my five rows of 70 stitches going across. Okay, it doesn't look like five rows, but it's five rows. Now that we have that out of the way, so now, like I told you before, you're at the end of the row, do a chain one, and then you turn. Okay, so now you're starting to go this direction. Okay. So now I'm going to open up my pattern real quick and now I'm going to look at it. So basically where we are, this is what I do every single time when I'm doing my pattern. I take my erase tool, eraser tool. You can click on it and it says object eraser or pixel eraser. So if you hit pixel eraser, it's just going to erase part of the line. But in this case, we want to have it on object eraser. So now you are erasing a whole entire object of that highlighter, okay? So now I'm going to highlight the row that we are working on right now, okay? I want to be able to see through the highlighter, okay? So I'm going to hit this little bar right here and I'm gonna slide it down so that it is a pretty see-through. You could tell it's see-through because there's these squares here. There's these um, grid squares here that lets you know how see-through the actual pen mark is. So I'm gonna get my little dial right up in that area, okay? So we'll, you'll be able to see the difference in a few seconds. So I'm gonna, like I said, we're on row number six. And so see how you can see through it? So I can tell what's underneath the stick, what's underneath the highlighter, okay? So now I know that I am going to go 23 stitches across. So let's say we are right here. I'm gonna hit, I'm gonna do a black pen. I'm just gonna mark on here for the reference for you guys to see. We are starting right here, okay? And then we're going into this direction, okay? So we're crocheting across here and then we're gonna end up over here at this end, okay? So going from this direction, we're gonna go 23 white stitches over, okay? So let's do that right now. We already chained one, and so I'm gonna go 23 stitches over, okay? Just using this white neutral color. So three, 22, and then 23, okay? So that's what it starts starting to look like. Now I'm going to grab a different color now. I got this dark orange part that's gonna be representing this this little edge in the top edge. This right here is only representing this one last stitch right here. The first color I'm gonna really be working with is this color right here. So I'm just going to wind up something. So this is gonna help you later on because obviously you're not gonna be needing a lot of it. So I'm just gonna make myself a little tiny ball of it like I did with this. I'm gonna make myself a little tiny ball. So I have a little ball here that's gonna be of my orange. We need a good amount of this. I just wanna make sure that I have enough. So I'm just gonna leave it in the ball. So we have our three colors. We have this one's gonna be the outside edge. This one is the middle. This one is the right side, okay? So we're gonna start with this little guy right here. We know that we're only doing one stitch. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna zoom in real quick. We know that we're only doing one stitch of this orange, okay? Let me show you how to do that. So believe it or not, what I like to do is take out the last stitch that I just did, okay? Took it out. I'm still using this white. What I'm gonna do is a half of a stitch, a half of a single crochet. So basically I'm gonna stick it in here and I'm gonna pull up a loop, okay? And I'm gonna drop that color. We don't need the color anymore. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add this orange in here, okay? So all I'm doing is pulling up a loop and I'm finishing that single crochet, but you can't see the orange in the actual stitch once it's flattened, okay? And so we're gonna start working with this orange. And all we're gonna do is we're gonna do the same thing we did with this last stitch. We're gonna start with a loop. And so as you can see, when you start with a loop and you start putting it in to your work here, that's the part that's going to be shown, okay? So we don't wanna go and 
do a stitch because then again we would have to attach the color that comes after this to this orange color and this is the way you do it so we're going to take our orange that goes in the middle here and we're going to pull up a loop of that and finish out this single crochet right here okay and of course in this stitch you can't see this new orange okay so we're going to drop the old orange and we're going to start with the new orange and we're going to go in the next stitch okay and then there you go you do a single crochet so that's how you are going to be changing colors now you may be thinking oh my goodness you have these loose strings oh my goodness what are we going to do but look how it looks okay so pay attention to the way it looks so I'm going to turn it over now this is optional um, but in my case I just like to finish off things so I'm just going to go and I'm going to pull I'm going to be pulling and paying attention to what my stitches look like but I'm going to just knot this real quick okay so I got a knot so I knotted the old orange the first orange that I'm using here and I have this little yellow orange so I'm just gonna knot it to a string that's right next to it it doesn't really matter I'm just trying to secure it so that the stitches don't get wonky later on as I'm crocheting and I'm just gonna leave it the way it is like I'm gonna leave this string just off to the side just leave it okay then I am going to keep working in this orange now how many stitches do I need to do of this yellow orange according to my pattern if I look at it and see in my highlighted area 21 stitches so I have to do 21 of this yellow orange okay so I'm going to do 21 of this yellow orange going across here video again like I said before in the very beginning this is not a video to teach you how to crochet the skills that you need to use a chart and to do a chart you have to know how to crochet that's number one number two you need to know how to change colors that's number two you need to know how to work in rows and how to chain and all that good jazz you need to be intermediate in the area of intermediate but not expert you don't have to be an expert to do this just know the basics of crochet once you know the basics of crochet doing a chart is super easy to you I promise you there's plenty of videos out there there's plenty of my videos out there that I can link in the description box below that would teach you how to crochet using those learned tips on how to crochet is going to help you in reading this chart and being able to crochet using this chart so I did 21 stitches okay but I'm taking my loop I'm taking my hook out of this single crochet that I completed and I'm going to I'm going to uncomplete the single crochet by sticking my hook underneath these two loops here okay cuz that's where your that's where your hook will be if you are about to finish this single crochet but we're not going to do that we are just replacing this string right here with another color so we are replacing it with this lighter yellow color to give myself and it's going to make it look like it has light hitting it hitting the pot over time okay we're going to complete the single crochet by drawing up this loop boop okay so then you have you're going to drop the end of it and you are going to drop the yellow yellow the, the yellow orange that we were just working with the old orange and we're going to complete this last single crochet here now after we did 21 we're working on our lighter color here and so I only need one stitch of that so to do that I'm just gonna stick my hook in the next stitch pull up a loop and that's it that's all I need that's all I need to complete and make this color added to the um, pattern I'm going to cut this okay and then I'm just going to tie a little knot nothing special because guess what all these little strings that you see right here they're all gonna be inside the pillow no one's gonna be able to see it no one's gonna see it 
No. They're not going to know. So now, like I said, we have these two loops right here. And then you're going to grab the end of your beige yarn and you're just going to pull a loop up into these two loops. So I like to, before I start, before I start um, tying knots and stuff, I like to do a couple crochets. So I know that to end off this row, I have to do 24 white single crochet is going to the end okay so i'm going to go a couple single crochets so that i know that yarn is really in there okay then i'm going to turn it over and i'm going to take the end of my beige and the end of my last color that i was working with which was this light yellow and i'm going to tie those in a knot okay you are more than welcome to make these strings a little bit shorter. That's up to you. As I always say, it's your world. So just teaching you how to live in it, I guess. It's a crafty world. It's your own crafty world. and just teaching you how to live in your own crafty world. Let me finish out this row with 24, as the pattern says, 24 beige single crochets, okay? And so you can see our color changes. You can't really see this color change because it's a little, they're very close in color and I'm, I'm okay with that. Okay, so next what I'm going to do is this is the really important part. This is how I do it. You may choose to do something different after you hear this explanation. You might be like, yeah, I ain't doing that. That's up to you. But this is how I do it, okay? And you're free to take the information and do what you will with it. But this is how I do it. So once you get to the end of the row here, right? So we already did our first row. Before I move on to my next row, again, I'm going to open up my pen, hit the erase. And so I am going to check to see if I have object eraser on, and then I'm just going to erase that highlighted line. I know that I was on that first line there, row number six, and now we're moving on to row number seven. Choose my, I'm choosing my highlighter. And for the most part, what I'm gonna do, cause this just makes it easier on me because I know all this is white and I know all that is white. I'm just gonna highlight the row in the plant areas. All right, so we're on row number seven. So I'm just doing a general in that row so I know what row I'm on. Before I move on, I always do that. Now that that is done, I can look at this and I'm like, okay. So basically all I'm doing is repeating. This pattern is so easy to follow because for a good part of it, good portion of it is just repeating it for about good 10 to 20 rows. So that helps out in the long run, okay? That's what, this is the reason why I chose to do this pattern so that at one point it's, it's a monotonous pattern, whereas it doesn't change all the time. So now we're at the end of our row. Now we're moving on to row number seven. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna chain one. Like I said, we get to the end of the row, just like any single crochet garment, we're gonna chain one at the end of the row, okay? So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna work on the back of it. So for right here, we went this way, okay? So we went into this direction. We still went into this direction. I'm still gonna, I'm gonna write a little arrow to let myself know, and let you guys know which way we were working, okay? Okay, so this is where we are right now. Eh. Now we're moving on to row number seven right here, okay? So this is the part where you flipped it over and you're gonna start working in this direction now, okay? Just like you would with any crochet garment, you are going to be working like this, back and forth. We're not gonna start rows over and start from the beginning like for every row, that's not gonna happen. So we're gonna start working in this direction now, okay? So. Here's the part where I said in my last video where you have to read the graph backwards in a way. So since you marked everything, this is a, another reason why we marked everything. So when you mark everything, you don't have to guess. Okay, because this is where I am. This is where I end. 
this is where I ended my row. Okay, so now we're going into this highlighted area here. So we turned, we're right here. And so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna do our 24 white yarn single crochets going across until we hit this pot again. Okay, so I'm gonna do that really quick. You don't need to watch me do that. I'm arriving up to the edge of my pot here. I'm gonna go into this last stitch here and I'm just gonna pull up a loop so that I have two loops on my hook. Now here is the part where you have to pay attention. You take this yarn that we're not gonna be working on for a little bit, we're gonna pull it to this part of the crochet so that it's on the back. So that when you're crocheting, you're not gonna be having strings sticking out in the front where everybody can see, okay? So we pull our yarn to the back of our work which is facing us now. Okay, so now from there, just to make it a little bit easier for ourselves, I'm gonna cut the yarn here. I'm not gonna tie it in a knot just yet, okay? So now we already have, we have to grab our light yellow and then we are going to finish this single crochet stitch by pulling up a loop, okay? And there you go, since it's already sitting here, okay? Then from there, we're gonna go into our yellow stitch. You just have to make sure you pay attention to. Make sure you pay attention to your, your work and which stitches you're going into. And you're just gonna pull up a loop. Then, like I said before, you're pulling your yarn to the back of your work so you're not gonna have strings and stuff sticking out the front, okay? So next, we're gonna grab our darker orange so we're going to yarn over and pull this through okay so now we're going to start working in our yellow again pay attention to what stitch you're going to be going into okay and then that's when you're going to start doing this dark yellow okay so at this point i don't like it i don't like to go any further i like to take and go back to my strings that i just did the end, the string ends for my, my white yarn. I'm going to try tie that into a knot. And you can tie it in a knot because it's all on one side now. Now I'm going to tie into a knot my yellow strings. And there you go. So now I'm going to keep working on my orange. This is just a system. This is just a system that I have when I'm working on my charts. I do this system so that um, later on, I'm not gonna be having a bunch of knots I need to make. I could do my knots as I go. So now I'm doing 21, I'm gonna do 21 of this dark orange of the pot, okay? Or this, this mid, this medium orange of the pot. Comment down below if you can hear my squeaking of my crochet hook and if you have any suggestions on how I can get rid of that squeaking of my hook. I tried many things. I tried Vaseline. I tried all kinds of things. I tried soap and water and just like drying it and then putting powder on it. I tried everything and it just squeaks and squeaks and squeaks and drives me bonkers. We are going to take, pull up a loop in our last stitch here, okay? And then we're gonna take our yarn and move it to the back, which is facing you now. And then you're gonna pull up your darker orange and then you're gonna pull up a loop, okay? And then you are going to stick the crochet hook into your next stitch, pull up a loop, but you're not gonna finish it. You're gonna pull the yarn to the back of your work, which is now facing you. And then you're going to pull up a loop of white and you're gonna finish that single crochet. Okay, next, you are going to continue with your white, but make sure that you're pulling all those stitches facing you so that you're not gonna be having strings poking out through the front. So we're gonna continue with white for a little bit. 
I don't know why I do that. I just want to make sure the stitches are even. And then I will go in and start tying off my medium orange. And then I'm going to tie off my deeper orange. Okay, so now I tied off all my strings. So now I am going to go and start finishing my white. And of course, as we know, we, since we're working in this direction, we ended with this orange here. And now we are finishing off with our 23 single crochets so that, or 23 white single crochets so that we can end right here, okay? So let's do that really quick. Okay, so now we're ending it at our row. Now we're gonna end with what? A chain one. And then we're going to turn. So now here is the test, okay? If you go and you look at the front of your work and there's some strings that are poking through, then you know that you did it wrong. But in this case, all my strings are still on the same side where they were for my very first row of my pot, okay? So now, if we go back to our pattern here, I'm going to take and I'm going to, sometimes I like to leave that highlighter there because sometimes when you start to get deep into your pattern and you hit erase, and then when you erase, you're like, wait, oh no. And then you have a freak out moment because you're like, what row was I in? And then I have to go back and go to my pattern here. I have to go to my crochet work and what I've done and I have to count those rows. To eliminate you having to do that because there is going to be a freak out moment. It's going to happen. Okay. Sometimes what I like to do, this may sound crazy. I like to change the color of my highlighter. Okay. Then I come in and I highlight the very next row. Okay. And when I highlight the very next row, I look and I say, okay, then, and only then, I will erase the highlighter from the row below. Okay, so now I know I got my right highlighter on the right row, okay? So now we are on to row number eight, okay? So we're ending up, we ended up right here. So we ended up right here and now we are moving to row number eight and then we're gonna be right here now. And so next, of course, we already did our chain one and we turned. So now we're gonna do 23 white single crochets going across to this pot. And basically from there, you are going to repeat every other row going backwards and forwards. I hope that that was easy enough. All you have to do is hit rewind. I have timestamps that are in the description box below so you can fluctuate between the two types of rows, okay? And basically repeating the pattern of going back and forth, back and forth, and looking at your chart and reading your chart backwards. So from there, I'm going to finish this pot and then I'm going to show you what it looks like um, and I'm gonna show you what the back of it looks like and the front, what it looks like. We're gonna do row number 27 and 28 together, okay? So stay tuned. Okay, so this right here, what you're seeing is the finished work of just the part of the pot. And so um, for the most part, it was a very easy pattern to do, okay? So this is the last row of this box. So we should be at row number 20 six okay because we did five rows here 21 rows there that's 26 that's just a little bit of math sorry you guys i promise you no math but um i wasn't being truthful with that statement so if your pot looks like this then you can do a happy dance if it doesn't i'm sorry you're gonna have to rewind sorry okay so now let's look at our the back of our work so what i did was i like to keep you know, my strings, I found that I like to keep them low. So I cut them, um, I tied them all off. And you see, this is the only places are on the side of the pot 
where we are, you know, having our cuts and that's okay. So that's what it looks like. It's not anything crazy. And of course we don't have any of the strings coming through. Okay. So now, of course, as you know, I'm going to mark on my, I'm going to mark on my pattern really, really quick. So grabbing my black pen, what I'm going to do is show you which way we're going to work. So from this last row, I can tell by looking at it that it was going backwards. So in this last row that I did, this is the direction that I worked it. And then I ended up here. This is row number 27, which we we're about to do. I actually started it with the white. So I already started it with the white and we're going to be working in this direction now. Okay. And so according to this pattern, I ended it at the pot because I've been doing it for like 20, 25 rows. So I just ended it at the pot, as you can see here. So of course, looking at this pattern, as you can see here, I have to add one, two, three more white on there. So I'm starting to get into my pot. So one, two, and three, but I'm not gonna finish it, remember? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab from my little ball, dark green. I'm gonna pick up a string from that and I'm going to finish this single crochet off, okay? With this dark green. Then I'm gonna go into the very next stitch and I'm going to half do it because I only need, only need one of that green. Then I'm gonna go for my lighter green and I'm going to finish out that single crochet. And then I'm gonna go for, it calls for four, two, three, and four. So that's what it looks like. On camera, it doesn't look very much of a difference, but in person, it will definitely look different. You can see it's a, this one's a darker one and these four are lighter ones. And so what I would do is I'm gonna take and I'm gonna tie these off. Okay. And I'm gonna cut them just because I'm here. Next, I'm going to grab up my string of green. And so this is the part where I feel that I want to take and just pull up a loop. But then what happens is you start to have a string going across here because it's coming, because it's coming from this last stitch and it's coming over and going into this stitch. So you'll have a little string there. Just make sure that it is tight. So I'm pulling it as I'm, before I even go into, before I even finish off this single crochet, I'm just pulling it. So I'm pulling it tight here, half do it, because I only need one of that green real quick. And I'm gonna pull up and keep using my light green. And then I'm going to go over with this light green, I'm only going to do one stitch finish it off with the dark green. It gets confusing, but as long as you pay attention and count your stitches as you go, it will become pretty easy to you. And then I got two of the dark green. It's the first time I did two stitches of the dark green. It seems like I'm going fast because by this point, you guys should be getting it. If you're not getting it, you might have to rewind the video again, but this is basically what it's like. So then this is how I can tell if I did this right. So you can always go back and count and look at it and see if you did it correctly. So as you can see here, I have one, two, three, four before I start to get outside my pot. So I should have four stitches of the pot left to do. So one, two, three, four. So I do have four stitches of the pot left to do. So that's really good. That makes me, lets me know that I'm in the right direction. So I'm going to, I don't wanna have a string 
going across here because it's way too long for my liking. So I'm just going to cut that and just bring it over here. Finish out this dark green and start doing that white, that outside white. And that's how we are going to finish out this row. We're going to finish out this row with white. So now we're at the end of our row. We're going to do our last single crochet. We are going to do a chain one and we're going to turn it. We just did our row number 27. And so now we are going, we went in this direction. Okay. And now we are going to, we ended up here and chain one, we got up to here. And next we're going to be working in this direction. Okay. And so from this point, what we're going to do is we are going to, I am going to do a really quick highlight of this row. And so remember from past rows, what I would do is I'll pick my highlighter. I have a highlighter. This is the part where you can prevent yourself from having a, a freak out moment. I'm going to take my new color, which is a different color than the highlighter that is already there. So now we're going to highlight our next row. And I'm going to hold it down so it straightens it out. And so then I can take my eraser make sure that is on the object eraser and not the pixel eraser. Then I'm just going to erase that highlighter and then it shows me on my next row. Okay. So now, as I said, we are going in this direction. You see where the arrows are going and I'm going to be starting with the white. I already chained one. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this white part of this row. And then I'm going to show you what that looks like. Okay. So now, as you can see, I'm up to my pot now. I got half a stitch I'm doing here. Moving my white string to the back of our work like we always do, we're gonna pull up in our half of single crochet stitch here. We're gonna finish out the stitch with the dark color, okay? Cause that's our next color that we're gonna change to. And then I'm going to insert the hook in that last white stitch of row number 27. I'm going to pull up a loop and I'm gonna do a single crochet. Then I'm going to do two single crochets because according to the pattern, I have two dark stitches I need to do. Then I need to do two light stitches. Let's do that. So we did a half of a single crochet here. So we're going to finish it out with the light color and we're going to do two of the light color, half of that single crochet. I'm going to pull my string to the, to the back where it's facing me. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw up and grab some of my dark color because I have two dark colors to go. So I'm going to do two dark colors, one and then two, stop it right there. Grab my light color, finish out that last single crochet. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're about right here. So I need to do three light colors. So three light color greens, one, two and then this is the third one I'm going to stop bring the string to the back facing us pull up a dark and then how many dark do I need one dark okay starts to get confusing but don't let it beat you pull the work back pull the string back grab some light only have one of that to do real quick so I got one of light halfway finished that grab up some dark. So by this point, you should be moving right along. If you're struggling, you're going to have to go back and do it again. Now I'm about right here. So now I need to do five. Okay. So I'm going to finish out this single crochet and then go five of the light. Two, three, four, five. Now I'm going to take, and this is our last stitch in this row of the cactus. So I'm going to draw up a dark green. 
Okay. And you can tell where you are. So it says, see, this is row number 27 right here. And it's saying that there should be a white stitch right underneath this when I'm about to do this dark stitch. And as you can see, that's where I'm going. I'm going in a white stitch. So this right here is going to help you too for later on when you're like, what am I, am I doing this right? You are doing it right. So from here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the string from the other side. I'm going to tie it. I'm going to tie that in a knot. Okay. Then I'm going to pick up the end. And in my dark stitch, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure I pull the string to the back facing me. And then I'm going to pull up a loop of white because I'm going to finish out this row with white. Okay. Make sure you pay attention as to what, what stitch you're going into. So I'm going to go one, two, three, just to make sure it's really in there. And then I'm going to start tying off my white here because that's going to help me. It's going to help keep my stitches not looking so loose. Um, so tying these knots keeps your stitches so that it's not looking all loose. And then I'm going to finish out this row with white. And then I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, so now we're finishing out our row here. So of course we do our last single crochet, then we're going to chain one and then we're going to turn this around. And then what you're turning around to is the front of your work. So you can start to see your cactus and how it's going to start looking. And of course you shouldn't see any strings poking through the front there. So this is what it looks like after it's all done. And then this is what the back looks like. Delightful. But of course, this is all going to be inside the pillow. You're not going to see it. I promise. They're not even going to notice. And like I said before, a typical 70 by 70 pixel image would work out to be about 17 by 17. So as you can see here. Okay, so I got, I ordered some seven, 17 by 17 pillows. Um, I don't know if that's what I really need, but they came like this and I just wanted to open them on camera <laughs> because there's something wrong with me. Okay, so I'm gonna open up the tape real quick. I don't wanna watch it get like really, really large. <laughs> oh man, it's the little things you guys. It is the little thing. So this is the pillow. What does it really look like? Okay, so I want to do it so that the camera can see it. So I'm going to poke a little hole in it. And watch it be anticlimactic. I'll go and I'll be like, oh, you hear it? Hear it? I don't know why. These pillows are huge. All right, let me get more. Here it goes. Just like that. <laughs> okay, I was having way too much fun. All right, let's put this pillow together. So this is the finished product of a pillow. And as you can see, this is what the stitches are looking like. All I did was I put the same amount that I have on the front here. I put it on the back just in plain white. I just sewed it together. I showed you the pillow insert earlier. Um, and so this is the finished product and I'm happy with it. And this was made by using a chart. Look at that. Yeah. So anyway, yes, you guys, I hope that this video was informative for you. Um, of course, as usual, you guys can just go to the description box for anything. If I forget to add anything, do not hesitate to remind me that I forgot to add this certain thing because guess what? I'm human, I forget things. 
It happens. So anyway, I hope you guys can use this technique to make your own graphs. You can even use this graph and make the same pillow if that's what you want to do. Um, that's completely up to you. I'm giving it to you for free. Enjoy it. Use it as practice for when you decide that you're going to do your own chart. Or you can be brave and just be like, you know what? I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to change it up a little bit different. And I'm just going to go in there without practicing. That's okay too. We, we live in a brave world here. Okay. Of course, I'm linking up here to the video that came before this to teach you how to do the charts. So yeah. And I do this all for you guys. And when you guys go to the description box below and you buy all my different types of merch, that helps me to be able to do two weeks and spend two weeks on a video to teach people something new. I'm telling you guys these things because I wish that somebody else told me this. So anyway, as usual, you guys, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Okay, bye.